Hello. Hi guys. Hello, hello. Um, welcome back to another day of self-isolate with me. I'm so glad that you all are here. Um, I hope that you are staying safe and um and healthy you and your loved ones i could hi katie <laughs> i'm so glad you're on here um i could not be more ecstatic for one the fact that this um this human being is coming on here to say hi to you guys but two because i have known jennifer morrison since i was i think seven years old um and she's just been the most beautiful friend to me so i am going to bring her on and i'm so excited um, so we're just going to answer some questions for a few minutes and, uh, have a little reunion. Hi, Patrick. Um, and so I'm going to guest her right now. Also, um, let's see. Do, 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 do. Hold on. She just texted me. We're going to stall a minute. <laughs> we're going to stall a minute. We're going to answer some questions. It's going to be good until she's on. Um, this is so funny. Hold on one second. I have to text her really quick. Okay. Yes. Hi. I am here. We, uh, we're going to hold for a moment. Um, <laughs> I'm going to answer some questions until she can come on. Um, but Katie said I love her and she did an interview saying she watched The Bold Type and I died. As she should watch The Bold Type because it is the best. Um, hi, Amanda. Thanks, Patrick. I hope you guys are staying safe too. Thinking of you all. Um, I figured while we wait, I can guest some of you guys right now. Um, that way I can see some of you and say hello. And then we're going to figure out on her end how to get her on. Um, <laughs> hold on one second. Sorry, I'm trying to write as I'm on with you guys. Um, I think what we might have to do is, here's what I'm thinking. We are going to also talk to Wendy. Oh, yes. Thank you, Katie. I need it to happen. Um, okay. Here's what we're going to do. Um, I am going to, we're going to figure out on her end because Instagram's not letting me add it on. Um, so we're going to come back in a second and please stay up and hang out with us. We will be there. We're going to figure out this little technical thing that's going on. Um, and I will be right back, I swear. Love you guys. Oh, she's here. <laughs> there we go. I'm going to bring her on. Hold on one second. Um, hold on. <laughs> I was like, I can't get it to work. Hi, honey. Oh, we did it. I'm we so did it. proud of us. I know. You look so pretty. I was, um, I literally said this morning, because I've been trying to, like, shower and look semi-decent for these. <laughs> um, and today, I woke up, and I was like, you know what? If there's one person who can make me feel, like, pretty enough to just, like, not wear, I was like, Jen. Because she oh, was my gorgeous. God. Of course. I was like, spit the breathing today. Thanks for no, doing I mean, this. I put on some mascara, which was, like, a huge leap forward. Jerry was like, oh, my too. God, you're so done up. I was like, I put mascara on. <laughs> you look so good. <laughs> Thank you for doing this. I'm so, I mean, I know everyone else is freaking, but I'm equally is like so happy. I'm happy to be here. It's my pleasure. <laughs> I, um, I was talking to my brother's girlfriend today because she mm. just started once upon a time from like the start again. And oh. um, I was like, Jen's coming on. She was like, that's so, Colin's on here. Hi, Colin. Hi, Colin. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I was like, it's so crazy because I've literally, I've known you since I, since I didn't have front teeth, since I was like full. <laughs> no, you were so little. I was so tiny. And you were one of the first people that I can remember that showed me like just the most love. And also I was seven, but you treated me like I wasn't. And you would write me emails to like my mom's email account and be like, checking in, how's life? And you were just always just so lovely to me and just oh. I just do I have such love for you so thank I you I had a I had a picture with you from the episode of house in my trailer for years you did I think I don't know if your mom maybe gave me the picture or something at the end of the episode but I feel like that picture even like traveled with me to once upon a time because I oh had just like God. all my trailer stuff together yeah 
But yeah, I had a picture of us from that set forever in my trailer. Thank you so much. That's the sweetest thing. I could cry. I didn't know how much I needed that, but I did. Oh my God. No, you so were always sweet. hanging out with me. Oh, I love you. Thank you. Um, are you, you're self-isolating. You're in LA. Are you in LA? Yeah, I'm in LA. It's just uh, me and Jerry and Ava. Ava's yelling at me over here because she like wants dinner. She starts begging an hour before dinner. I'm trying um, to foster a dog right now. Oh, how's that going? Well, I haven't gotten the dog yet. Oh, you're trying. I thought you said you are. Okay. I think I yeah. was too honest in my application. Oh, yeah. They asked me if I was good at crate training. And I wrote, yes, I've done that before, dot, dot, dot. But I like bed cuddles. I just think I was a tad too. Yeah. I think I should have lied a little bit more. Yeah. <laughs> Do. All I want is a puppy. I just want to snuggle with it, you know? Yeah. Crate training is worth it, though, at night. Uh, it's definitely in the long run worth it. I know. I need to figure it out. Um, should we answer just a few questions? Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how. I mean, the multitasking in this situation is so I'm so bad. complicated. Okay. I'm just going to. There's like a question box when you do live, and then people can ask questions. Oh, okay. Um, so many which fancy. I always. I always wish you could share it with the person that you're live with because you have like this pressure to try and pick a question that. Oh, you can see the questions and I can't. Okay. Yeah, I got that's it. A problem. Uh, that's fine. I trust <laughs> you. I, I, I've got you. I promise. Um, let's see. Mm, okay. We'll start. We'll start with this. What do you like to do to stay productive? But I see it. It came yeah. up. Okay. Sorry. Go ahead. Yes, that's good. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It says, what do you like to do? I've never done this before. Can I tell you something? When when people would, uh, when I would watch this. Oh, sorry, hang on. The doorbell makes her crazy. Me too. Okay, okay, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it, I hear it. Thank you. I love you. That is a very big catch. Okay. If I don't open the door after she hears the doorbell, she won't stop barking. So even if I'm not going to like, you know, bring in the package, I have to just open the door so she knows she doesn't need to keep protecting me. Yeah, that's good. Sorry. Okay. We were about to answer a question. This this is the best. Um, What I was saying was when I first saw someone put this up, that was my exact reaction too, except it wasn't my live. I was just watching alone in a room. And Uh, I was like, the bubble, where's the bubble? Why can't I do that? Um, So it is exciting. But it says, what do you like to do to stay productive? But a reminder that it's okay not to be productive. Because I think everyone's kind of in this weird funk right now where it's like, you have all the time in the world. You should be so creative. But yeah, it's just hard to sometimes. It's yeah, it's I got to say it is tricky. I the first two weeks, I felt so much pressure to like, catch up and dig myself out of reading that I haven't been able to do. And I have so many projects that I'm developing as a producer and a director right now that it's like it's overwhelming just the sheer amount of content that I have to manage on a daily basis and I tend to be at my best when I can go like really hard at one project at a time so it's a huge challenge now kind of shifting into doing more producing to like have to split myself creatively between so many things that require so much of my mind to kind of imagine you know, it's like, cause I feel like I live in my imagination in all these potential versions of things more than I can live yeah. like in something concrete. Yeah. Um, so I, I think I kind of exhausted myself those first couple of weeks because everything was so uncertain and we didn't know how long anything was going to last or how bad anything was going to be. And I felt like I just had to like race to make the most of that time. And then my body kind of like kicked my ass. I just like, I had a night where I got super exhausted and it was just an exhaustion that was so different than anything I'd ever experienced to the point where I was scared because I was like, oh my God, this is like one of the symptoms, you know, it really kind of scared me. And so I just stopped and I slept for like two days. Like I just, I just laid in bed. I slept that night, like almost 12 hours. I clearly needed it. Um, I didn't really get out of bed the next day. Like Jerry totally took care of me all day. Um, and, um, and then, you know, after about 48 hours, I started to feel like myself again and I was fine and I didn't have any other symptoms or I just, I definitely wasn't sick. I just think I had worn myself out doing what you're talking about, which is like putting too much pressure to deliver. And then, um, you know, and then I kind of just adjusted to like, 
we wake up when we wake up now. And we tend to be a little bit early risers and yeah. Ava gets us up. She's like our alarm <laughs> clock. But like, we haven't set an alarm clock in two weeks. So we get up probably between okay. like seven and 8.30ish, you know. Um, <laughs> That's a good time, Jess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not like you sleep in crazy, but it's just instead, I mean, yeah. listen, when I'm really going hard, yeah. I get up at four in the morning every morning. So, yeah. Um, so, so yeah, and then, I do I have a morning ritual and Jerry has a morning ritual and we do our thing in the mornings and we both work out and he does his CrossFit and I do my yoga. Yeah. Um, if I have little bits of things I want to get done, I sort of make manageable goals during the day, but every day I stop at 6 PM. So like it, it, that has helped a lot where it's like, we cook together at 6 PM. We have Good dinner. Time. We make a list of movies that we watch each week. Yeah. Um, we always sit down at the dining table and have a nice dinner, you know, so I think shifting into that balance of kind of having a time limit of yeah. the hours that I'm allowed to be productive made a big difference. Yeah. And that's something that I don't, I think that, I mean, for me at least is something I'm learning how to do too. And it's, I don't think with what, with what we do and often with any kind of job that takes you, you know, you take stuff home with you all the time So yeah. to have this, to have this chance to go oh my gosh, like, it's okay if I want to sit down and watch a show. Like, I've never said that to myself. Like, oh, yeah. if I turned on the TV to watch a show, I would feel this immense guilt for like, you know, like you should be creating something. So that way, like someone has that to go sit down and watch. And so it's been learning that whole idea of you can yeah. get what you can get done, but then also sit with yourself and enjoy life. And I think this has, if there's been anything that this has done, I think maybe in a way slightly shifted the focus of how precious, like, it really is um, just yeah. the things you can do. But um, in terms of directing, I have to ask you because this isn't even their question. I'm going to no, ask you. Go one. for it. So I've always, I remember being so excited when I heard that you were like, starting to really go for that. Cause you had talked to me. I don't even remember like how stuff, like you would yeah. be like, love the business as a whole Bailey, like fall in love with all parts of it. And like, you, you know what I mean? Yeah. And so I've always carried that with me and, I think anyone that's ever talked to me and said, well, what do you want to do in 10 years, blah, blah, blah. I think the hope for me would be behind the camera. And then if mm -hmm. I read something that I love as an actress, I would get to go off and maybe do that yeah. and then have a family and just be creating behind the lens and finding things that inspire me from other people and creating that. What was, do you remember when you, when that shift kind of happened for you and you're like, I love this, but man, I think I could kill it. I could kill it in this way too. Yeah. I mean, it's interesting because it started super young in terms of theater directing. Cause I started yeah. directing theater when I was in high school and then continued that in college. And so like that looking at the world as a big, and looking at a creative world in the big picture was something that was naturally in me. And, you know, ironically, I think about this all the time it's such a silly moment, but I was doing Urban Legends 2, the final cut, that yeah. very, very special project. And um, I actually, I've got a great story for you, not public. <laughs> no, no, not public on this live. I got have it. To, you we'll side by that one. <laughs> the whole thing I just went through with that. I will call you. Uh, anyway, okay, it was 1999. <laughs> I was still yeah. in college. I like, I was literally doing all of my college courses remotely. I was like way ahead of my time with doing things remotely. I had to like FedEx my papers through <laughs> like email. Oh God, I'm so old. Anyway, um, so, so anyway, um, yeah, it was like 1999. But my character was a director. She's like the whole thing. That's why it's called Urban Legends 2, the final cut. Yeah, oh, because I had to turn in my final cut and people were getting killed. Got it, um, got it. And so uh, yeah. anyway, there was a moment though on the set, John Ottman was the director who's, and he's a great man. He's an incredible editor, an incredible composer and also a great director, but um, he's, uh, he's great. So anyway, I did something and I said to him, wait, this, do this doesn't end up making sense because of this, this, and this. It was like some action that I was doing. And I said, so, but it's one or the other, right? Like in the edit, it's gonna be one or the other. And he's like, yeah, that's true. I said, so it's cool if I change it at this point, as long as I stay consistent. He was like, you're going to be directing someday. Wow. <laughs> and I was, you know, I was 19 and I didn't yeah. really understand the gravity of what he was saying or why he was saying it, but he was just aware that it was like not common for a 19 year old actress to yeah. be like thinking in a way of like, how does this edit together? And what's yeah. the logic of this? And how does it all fit together? 
Yeah. Um, so I think this is a very long way of answering your question. No, but... I, I, love, I, love, I love this. So I <laughs> asked it. I wanted the long answer. <laughs> But um, so it was in there. And like, I think the thing that intimidated me the most was the technical stuff. Yeah. And then I just, I mean, I spent 18 to 20 hours a day, every day of my life from age 23 to 38 on a set yeah. every day. I mean, and before that, many, many hours, but just not like every day for that like yeah. concentrated time. And the amount that you learn about the ecosystem and the structure of everything and how everything works and the amount of people you have at your fingertips to ask questions. Yeah. And I just became very curious and I let my curiosity be my teacher. And I learned from all the cinematographers I worked with. I learned from all the directors I worked with. Yeah. I learned from what I liked and what I didn't like and what I thought worked and what didn't work. I basically looked up curriculums of film schools and read everything they would read and watched everything they would watch. Cool. And then, ask questions about that. And so I was doing all that while I was kind of isolated in Vancouver. Yeah. Because I, you know, I was up and I was away for so long. Okay. And <laughs> everyone else on that set had families there. So yeah. I was the only person who didn't have like a family that transplanted with me. Yeah. yeah. And so I had a lot of time. I mean, I was just, I was like getting really good at quarantining basically. Um, <laughs> But uh, this arrived, you were like, I've got this. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, I was working crazy hours. But yeah. in those in between moments, you know, I realized like, I could read 100 to 200 pages a day on a set. And I could watch a movie a day. And I could, you know, so it was just like, I was realizing, like, if you really take advantage of that, those little downtime moments, and they all they all add up, you know, so um so yeah, it was it was while I was sort of like in the rainy forest of Vancouver, um, and I started <laughs> kind of Always realizing the amount I had sort of studied and consumed and like soaked up. And I was like, yeah. I want to do this. Like, I want to see. I want to see if I'm right that I can do this. And that's when I put my first short film together. That's amazing. That's what I've been. I mean, the the short film world is probably off of a live that I would love to talk to you about because mm -hmm. I've been saying that for a while. It was mm -hmm. like. Cause I, I've start, I started producing, like I produced when I was 14, but I like, I did that movie and I would like to say that it was, it was, I was more on the ends of, I think I jumped in creatively mm. and like gave that, I wasn't there for the before process of it all. Sure. But, yeah. Prep. I, yeah. I was like, I was originally attached just to be in it. And then I thought it was going to conflict with my show. So then I said, can I just produce it? And then we cleared the schedule. But by the time we cleared it, yeah. I was like, kind of happened on that. So you know, I, I dabbled with it. And then I did another one, then kind of added like a new layer to it where like I was hiring our crew and like I was a part of those discussions, but also realizing that so many things were happening on set that weren't being cleared by me, even mm. though I'm part of that and learning that for the first time. And going, yeah. Oh man, like I did just get walked over in that aspect. Okay, learn that, see that. Um, but then the one that I just did in Nashville, it was like, I think that was the moment for me where I was like, I can, I can speak up about things. Yeah. I have had the fortunate like opportunity to be working since I was six years old yeah. and to have taken that time and tried to soak it in as much as I can and listen and use the people there Yeah, uh, and really just try and go for it for the first time. And I think I left that going. I am so fulfilled when I'm trying to learn every single part of this world. Like yeah. I can't just go anymore and say lines. Like I love it. It brings me joy, but yeah. I can help it be in there and be like, honestly, guys, like if you just move this schedule around, this whole conversation yeah. can just be scrapped and like yeah. this is our day now. So can yeah, yeah. Just it's, it, once it's almost like um, once the veil is lifted, yeah. you can't, you can't put it back. Like once you can see how to problem solve certain situations. It's so fun. Yeah. It's, it's really it's interesting. So Cause like, you know, when I do go and, and only act on something, um, I, I really compartmentalize and I go in a very particular mindset, but it's also why I'm super picky now because I know that my problem solving brain is not going to survive a, a toxic environment you know what I mean like I'll, I'll lose it like I'll, I'll just be like I, I can't watch I can't watch how wrong this is all going you know I know <laughs> I do um that's amazing um wait okay so you just because you just did you you just what you just directed 
this or is it a a pilot series based off that book, right? Yeah. So, so I read it before the new. Oh, it's yeah, it's good. It is so good. And yeah, I'm not yeah. gonna lie, half of me was. Like, I'm so excited. Yeah. Audition for this, and Jen, out loud, I think I said it in my head. I was like, oh, this <laughs> is so good. Um, so that's shot. That's filmed. Yes, and. I don't know the logistics of announcing Fine. things. Don't don't say anything. But, but it's shot and it's great. And I'm proud of you. I'm just Fantastic. saying there's good things happening. <laughs> <laughs> um, everyone, okay, wait. Best this is I wonder if you could remember. So I said best costume that you've had the chance to wear in your life. Oh wow. Mine will always go back to Once Upon a Time just because I have never had anything to be anything like it. Yeah, you had great dresses there, too. I had great dresses. Um, so hard to go to the bathroom in, but, like, yeah, especially in the porta bodies in the forest. And, like, <laughs> Jesus. in the stalls with you being like, I'm not looking, like, holding up the Oh, God. Oh, I'm God. So sorry. <laughs> yeah. No, it was, it was crazy. Um, I, you know, I... I really enjoyed all of the fairy tale costumes on on Once Upon a Time. Eduardo Castro is so insanely talented. I mean, I feel like a broken record when I talk about it because it's like I say it too, and I it's was on the show just like it. nuts. It was like he just had like a couture shop there, and all of the people who worked with him, all of the the designers and and people who were cutting the fabrics yeah. and stitching the fabrics, and I, it was just. I mean, it was just incredible. I, uh, um, the I, wedding dress was pretty cool because that was like a very intentional um, ode to Grace Kelly, yeah. um, which was very fun. Uh, I mean, when else am I going to get to wear Grace Kelly's wedding dress, basically? Um, and um, the I re there was a white dress that I, I don't even remember what realm. I can't keep any of it straight. I, I have like no memory of the logic of any of it. It's like it all just, it's like a math test. It like all yeah. fell out of my head. <laughs> but we were in some realm somewhere in some alternate something. And they made me this gorgeous gown that was actually made out of like a, uh, like bed sheets, I think. They were like, they were like um, lace bed sheets or lace, like a lace <laughs> duvet or something. But it was like the texture and like yeah. the color and the cut. It was just, it was really beautiful. I, uh, whenever someone asks me about what it was like on Spawn Time, uh, and they'll ask about the costumes. I always, I feel like a broken record too. And I, and I wasn't on it like you were, but yet I still talk about him. Like I was there oh, after, like I, I know him. But I, I always, my impersonation was always, I'd walk in and it was like, if a real life version of Cinderella's workshop could exist <laughs> yeah, yeah, and so like true. birds could fly through and like wheel things, like that's what it was like. And I remember mm -hmm. I'd go in and it would just be scratched and they'd be like, okay, good. I'd go in the next day and then it would be this incredible dress and my breath would be taken away. Yeah. And then I would look in the mirror and he'd be like, <sighs> I'd be like, it's perfect. And he'd go, we need crystals. We need crystals. And just these boxes of like, he'd be like, Swarovski crystals. And he'd like start like hand sewing. Like and these boxes of just like crystals and yeah. like, stones and like diamonds that I had never seen. I was like, this is the craziest thing in the entire world. That's amazing. I yeah, was, I was it was simple. very fun. He, yeah, I, I mean, I, I wore so many real life clothes. I would get so jealous yeah, of everybody who could be in all the, like the pretty things all the time, you know? I know. Yeah, but your leather jacket was pretty sick. <laughs> it was a good one. Yeah, it yeah. Worked. It worked. I think, I think I've worn enough colored leather to rest, last the rest of my <laughs> life. <laughs> I get that. I did a show for five years and I was always in some sort of like Peter Pan or like Peter Pan collar shirt. Oh yeah. You're like, okay, like, that's I it. I've done that. Had, yeah. Always <laughs> have to wear tights under everything. And I was like, I've lived that. Like I've lived, please don't have me a pair of tights. Yeah. I love, like, I love the way it defines a character and the way me people too. connect with it. Like that to me warms my heart so much. Yeah. I'm so happy to see everyone else wearing a red leather jacket. Yeah. But I'm like, I, I did it. You did. <laughs> like, and you did I am happy to look at it. I don't you did it for about, like an hour. You did it for like 20 hours a day. For like, <laughs> 70. like you, you wore the hell out of that jacket. It was there was, a, I think I talked about this once in an interview too, but it was like, I was so intimately acquainted with every single version of that jacket. And there were like 45 of them. I'm not joking. Like there were so many variations on that jacket. And they were all like a tiny bit different in color and texture. And there was one out of the 45 that I really liked. It was like the exact right pot, the right like texture, you know, the whole right thing. And I can't remember, it was like the last, I think it was like season six or something. 
And I said, yeah, 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 we'll do, we're going to do the red jacket again for this section of time, but I, I want the one that I like, you know, and I described it and they're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And they put one in my room. I was like, it's not this one. They're like, no, I swear it's this one. I'm like, no, no, I, swear, I know, I know these jackets. Like, this is not it. And they like made me feel a little bit crazy. Like, it's just, it, there's a million of them. Like, wear this one, you know? And I, I, I feel so bad that I was just like, I'm going to be in it for so many episodes. And yeah. you know how it is if you don't feel right in something? No, it's not right. It's so much harder to get to the yeah. heart of the character to do your job right. No, it is. And I was like, I can't. I have to have the right <laughs> one. And they brought down, like, because they had to, like, all of them keep them up high somewhere, you know, in the yeah. big stock room. Yeah. And I came into my trailer, which was not big enough for 45 red jackets. <laughs> and there were 45 jackets in there. <laughs> and it was like, I finally found it. I was like, no, guys, this is the one. You know, like, okay, we'll mark this one. <laughs> <laughs> That's brilliant. That is so good. I love that. Um, well, I, uh, what time is it? Yeah, 3.30. You should go feed your pup. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Um, but I like you. I mean, I my heart's fulfilled. I'm so happy. It's I so know. nice to see you. I know. I was. You know what I was thinking? I was like, when's the last time I saw Jen? It'll be almost exactly a year ago. Oh, when we in ran into London. each other in the airport. Yeah, Jen and I. I was in. I was in the airport lounge in London, and I'm checking in, like trembling. It was my first time traveling like overseas for like a personal reason, and then oh. like I was so sad to be leaving. And I turned, I go, Jen, and you're like, Haley? <laughs> and, like, we walked, like, we sat there. I, like, gave her, like, the trip, like, the whole explanation. I was like, I'm in love. And she was like, that's great. And yes. We, like, <laughs> we traveled together and made sure I got my bags and my luggage. But that's almost exactly, exactly. A year ago. That. That's so crazy. My friend Katie Stevens is on here. She's off my favorite show, The Bold Type. And she's been texting me. And she's like, Jen's my favorite human. <laughs> I love that. Like, I'll tell her you said hi. Yes, um, please. But thank you for everything I have. I hope you know, I like, there are a few moments in my life that I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, do fully remember. And I remember being so excited to be on house, but kind of very overwhelmed with it. It was like a very yeah. feeling for me. And you were the person that if I would look over and see my heart, I just remember that feeling of like, just calmness and like, that's so nice. Myself, and that's carried on forever. And so I not only just respect you so much in every aspect, and I do, and I really mean that, admire you so much. Um, like, I hope you know you've, you've touched my heart, and, like, those things do carry on in life. And, like, it always Oh, I love that. Like, you yeah. have always been such a special soul. I, we, you know, we were doing those scenes in-house, and it was, like, all of us were looking at each other going, like, this little kid is putting us all in shape. No, <laughs> <laughs> but I do I love you so thank you I love you too I, thanks for inviting thanks me to do me. this thanks for saying yes hi to everybody <laughs> out there stay sane stay safe stay healthy take care of each other yeah give my love to everyone and I will uh, I'll see you, you too soon, I know lots of love thanks Jen bye bye I <laughs> think <laughs> that just made my whole self-isolation I'm not gonna lie um okay you guys I'm not even gonna talk because I should just end it with that because she's the best um Jen if you happen to still be watching thank you so much for just doing that um I am going to save this live I know a lot of you guys are saying please save it um I tried to save yesterday's live and Instagram just wouldn't let me do it um I literally tried all day yesterday and this morning so um I'm going to hit save Fingers crossed it works. If for whatever reason it doesn't upload, it's not me, I promise. Um, but sending so much love to you all, and I hope that you're staying safe and healthy. Um, I don't know about you, I woke up very overwhelmed by the news today and just kind of feeling it all um, a lot and realizing that, um, you know, it can be so overwhelming to not know when there is an end in sight. And um, my heart just goes out to everybody. And so if you have the ability to stay home, please, please, please stay home. Please do your part. Um, I know we can all feel so helpless with what's going on right now, but this is a way that we can um, do something on our end to try to make a difference. So stay home if you can. 
um, because there are so many people who aren't able to because they are at the front lines of all of this trying to take care of us and make sure that we're okay. So if you or a loved one or a friend or a family member is one of those people who are out there fighting the fight for us, thank you so much and thank you to them for all that they do. Um, I cannot wait to see you guys tomorrow. My friend Anne is coming on, which I can't wait. Um, so I'm sending lots of love. Um, stay safe, stay well, and thanks again, Jen. Bye guys.